Today on Houston Life, from high winds to flooding and power outages, we'll get the latest updates from the KPRC news team, including where Nicholas is headed next. Plus, how one local hardware store opened their doors early today to help the community. The tips you need to know for your post-storm cleanup. Then we're going to meet a young woman who started her own business at nine years old and now at 16. She's using her unique lip balm business to help give back to young cancer patients. And we are learning about few traditions for the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur, which begins at sundown tomorrow evening. All that and more straight ahead on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2, Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life on this Tuesday, September 14th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. It's good to see you. It's good to see you in studio. And hopefully y'all weathered Nicholas just fine. Well, and I think a big concern a lot of times when these storms come in, we all try to prepare the best we can. But sometimes when the storms just sit there, you never know how much rain we're going to get. At least it appears in this case, the storm moved quickly through. And I think that's a great sigh of relief for a lot of us. I know we're still dealing with power outages, of course. And so it's just been an interesting morning, but little cleanup to do in the yard and that kind of thing. But thankful nothing worse. We're just dealing with that. Did you notice the sunset last night by it was, chance? It was green and then it was pink and then it was purple. I felt it like the crazy. entire sky had illuminated and of course in the evening yesterday is when we were warned it would get bad. Yeah. But the sky was just so beautiful and then at 10 p.m. you know right when it hit category one hurricane for Nicholas those winds came right in. It hit us pretty hard. Absolutely and it's so funny because even during dinner last night right before we sat down AJ said some y'all need to come outside. You it's put the color day. out here. It was so crazy, but it seemed like it was sort of a, a spectrum of colors because it was yellow and then it was pink and then it was purple. Just had this unbelievable hue to it. Well, I love that AJ appreciates a good sunset. He certainly does. Okay, listen, let's check in with our KPRC news team who's been, of course, tracking Nicholas. Keith is standing by in Studio A. Keith, it's great to see you. Hey, good to see you all as well. Yes, Tropical Storm Nicholas moving out of the area, but last night made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane in Sargent, which is in Matagorda County, and that is where right now we find KPRC 2's Jacob Rascone with a look at the very latest. Jacob. Yeah, made landfall here overnight, and most of the damage we've seen along the beach has been a lot of water into some homes, including, and a lot of wind damage. But further inland, where we are now, you can see some of the wind and lightning damage. Just these trees like this just snapped in half. Um, this is from the wind, of course, the home just underneath. All of that uh, is going to be a lot of cleanup. And then the tree over here that just snapped in half and tossed all the way into the back window area. Just a lot of uh, cleanup here. They got a direct hit here in Sarge, about 12.30 in the morning. Most of the people we talked to, there are about 2,000 people who come here but don't live here permanently. A lot of them come on weekends. But most of them said they were out of here, and then they came back this morning to find all of this. The person who lives here lives in Conroe, hasn't actually seen it yet, and really just a lot of cleanup. And I just want to end with uh, a note, Courtney and Derek, that I saw the beautiful sky and really appreciated it last night as well. Hey, back to you, Keith, in the studio stuff for sure, Jacob. Thank you. All right, another area that was hit hard by the storm is our neighbors. They are in the southeast. KPRC2's Joel Eisenbaum live in Clear Lake Shores with a look at the latest damage there. Joel. Yeah, Keith, let's take this from a glass half full perspective because I did a live shot here this morning. I think it was around 11 o'clock and I was standing in a foot, foot and a half of water. The water has completely receded. You would call this basically Main Street or the, the big intersection in Clear Lake Shores, which is a small place, 1,200 people in Galveston County. We are just across the bridge from Kima. That's not to say some people didn't take it on the chin here. This coffee shop uh, owned by a, a sweet lady named Amy, they had at 1.3 feet of water water inside of their coffee shop. She says she can get it up and going in about a week. I hope she can. Same thing for this bar. They're still trying to uh, do some flood mitigation. And then this bridge, when we did a live shot this morning, this is really the main thoroughfare into the community. Lots of homes back there. Homes that 
Uh, every couple of homes, you'll see some flooding maybe on the first floor. A lot of them are raised up because, I mean, this is a community that is essentially on the water. Clear Creek is right there, and then you've got Galveston Bay just across the way. Um, they didn't have electricity here for hours, not since overnight. I mean, the wind really got whipping here. They've just restored electricity to about 90 percent, 95 percent of the people who live here. So they're managing to put it back together pretty quickly here in Clear Lake Shores, which is great news for them. Let's send it back to y'all. Great news indeed. Great to see those waters re recede. Joel, thank you. All right, we want to check it out with Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley. Frank, uh, it's not really a super fast mover, but I guess it's moving fast enough. You know, it's moving fast enough as long as it's moving. It's about six miles an hour. Uh, look at this. Nine inches of rain in the Crystal Beach area. Wow. This is Gilchrist. This is a click to I've gotten so many click to pins. We'll show more of those during the afternoon, but I think that tells the story if you were there in Bolivar for sure. Here's the path that this took, starting at Sunday morning when this became Tropical Storm Nicholas and continued just scooting past Brownsville on Monday morning at 9. And then, as we, if you were watching us last night, the forecast was that it was going to go right across Matagorda Bay over Palacios, but it actually hooked a little bit to the right last night, and then it makes its landfall at Sargent as a Category 1 between midnight and 1230, continued to move basically over Siena into the uh, Pearland area just north of Pearland and uh, south of downtown. And now currently it's actually a little more east. This is the one o'clock advisory. There's a look at the radar and you can see how most of the action was over the Gulf and then right along the coastal counties. That's where we've seen most of the damage. And here's a look at the uh, current uh, radar. You can see everything swirling here to northern, really uh, northern Bolivar Peninsula, southern Chambers County. So even though officially this is where the forecast uh, has it, I think it's moved a little over. This is what two hours old. We'll get a four o'clock advisory and have that. Bottom line is this is moving slowly to the east northeast at seven, but that's fast enough to get it out of here. And then it just trudges over Louisiana. So let me show you what that's expected to do. So there's where we have it now. The rain right now, Louisiana into Mississippi. So we're getting very little. We still have some coastal flood advisories just because of some run up there. So there's still some uh, until 10 o'clock tonight. There is some flooding there at the coast. So the future cast I have takes that center and moves it right along the southern coast of Louisiana and just keeps this rain going while we dry out Wednesday and Thursday. We're back to sunshine with highs in the low 90s. The Weather Prediction Center rainfall forecast for these folks here, you can see five to seven inches of rain and seven plus down along the coast through Saturday. So now Louisiana, after all they've been through with Ida, is going to return to some very heavy rain over the next several days. So as Keith said, thank goodness it's moving. So there's that coastal flood advice for minor coastal uh, flooding until 10 o'clock tonight. It's still breezy, 20 mile an hour winds, 17, 14, 16 down in Palacios. It's, that's going to continue to calm down as we go into the overnight, but it's still gusty out there, so be careful. Any branches that have been loosened could still fall and they could still hit you, so be very cautious as you go outside to inspect your property. There's a look at our city camera. We're getting a little bit of rain still. You can see 77 at Bush, Hobby, 77 Sugarland, 79 Galveston. The forecast, though, does call for some nice guys Wednesday, Thursday. Then we get back into chances of rain. We'll talk more about that at four o'clock. And look at this. That's a cold front for next week. How about that? Cold front. I think you put some smiles on a few people's faces, <laughs> right. Frank. Thank you, sir. All right, we will have another update in 30 minutes. For now, we want to get back to Houston life. Okay, so I'm brushing off the Uggs already, but Frank and Keith, <laughs> have you guys had a nap yet? My goodness. Uh, I, I'm sure I got a little more sleep than he did, but not much more. <laughs> uh, you did great last night. Down there in Matagorda and then <laughs> driving around. You were, what, driving around um, in... Uh, we, we were in, uh, we, where was I? It's, it's, it's a blur. It's a blur, <laughs> yes, yeah, Matagorda, but then also we were in Brazoria, the city Brazoria. of Brazoria. In yeah. Brazoria County, yeah. yeah. So I think I got home at a, right before four o'clock. Bill morning. Spencer and Ro, uh, Ros and she was great. Everybody yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, well, they, was they did really some good stuff. They did some around. good stuff for sure. Best team in town. Great to see both of you, and we'll see you in a little bit for another update. Okay. Uh, and speaking of, so, you know, we, by 7 p.m. last night, I was already into all of my hurricane snacks. Yeah. Thank you, best friend Lori. She dropped off all these gummies and Sour Patch Kids. So before dinner, I was already kind of like, you know, it's the stress eating. Um, but then on a Monday, we opened up the bottle of wine. Orlando made pasta. So we, it was like a normal thing. We had power then, clearly. Um, but then, you know, it all went downhill from there. So you lost power in the <laughs> middle of the night then? About four or five this morning. Yeah. And it's still out right now. Still out right now. I have, no, yes, yeah, still out right now. So how do you get ready for work when the, the house is dark? You have no blow dryer. 
Oh, well, honey, I didn't wash my hair. <laughs> no, we don't wash your hair. But typically, even if you I don't wash my hair with power, why would I wash it without? Even without the wash, though, you wouldn't use a little blow dryer to do something? Sometimes, but definitely curl it. But that's the reason why we've got the dirty low bun thing happening, because I couldn't salvage. I had to take Oscar out for a walk. He was going crazy. So I got rained on, of course, and then it just... You know, you just put the hair back and... I like a dirty low bun. Thank you. That's my nickname in high school. <laughs> but I'm hoping we get our power. You know, if that's the... Le We've been running around. Orlando went running around today looking for bags of ice to get the things out of the refrigerator just to perish all of our food that we have in there. So, it, yeah. you know, he got the cooler stocked, found some ice, and just trying to, you know... School's back in session tomorrow, so i got to make lunches in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> just send him a can of soup and a can opener. <laughs> wish, wish the best for them. By the way, I just want to go back on Frank's forecast a moment ago. Isn't it funny, only in Texas, that a cold front still is registering in the 80s? I know, but, but that's a high. <laughs> The we still get very is excited. In the 70s. Listen, we still get very excited here, and for it's our all cold relative. Fronts. It's Look all at this. relative. 68. I'll take it. <laughs> it's the coldest front <laughs> we've had in months. Oh, you know what? 68, 66. <laughs> yes, that is true. That's the front. However, still brace, <laughs> brace yourself, people. Get all your blankets out. That's one of the bonuses of living in Texas. So, luckily, uh, since Brandon quit his job and last Friday was his last day, he was able to to go out and get us ready for the hurricane. So by the time I got home from KPRC yesterday, he already had gumbo going. He started it at 3.30 p.m. And you know, a great gumbo, it's Takes all about time. the roux. Takes and time. And you can't leave it alone. So he stood there in front of our range there for hours. And it was, of course, a seafood gumbo. And you know, our friends over at Fish Fix, we used uh, a bit of the shrimp and we also used the crawfish tail. Oh, Derek, I love that. It was phenomenal. And then, of course, Brandon had to make a bunt, a bunt a cake. A bunt. You know, funny. Did y'all eat everything? Because I didn't see any leftovers brought into work today. Oh, well, you bring up a very good point. Did you eat stress eating? You ate it all, huh? Whatever, Where's we didn't mine? eat it all, but whatever Brandon ate, I, I had double or triple. That bunch looked very good. It was very good. It was just a cake out of a box, but you know, put it in a bump pan, it makes it look fancy. Absolutely, a little sprinkle of the powdered sugar on top. I know, a pro tip. Well, I'm glad that, again, the store moved moved quickly yesterday. Yes. I know for a lot of people, they are facing a huge cleanup ahead, uh, but gratefully, it was not worse than it actually was. I know, I'm, I'm so thankful for that as well, and keep all your photos coming in and information, and hopefully we can get our power restored very quickly. We've got our fingers crossed for that. As well. Well, still to come on Houston Life, Taco about a great idea. Get I'm what listening. I did there. Details <laughs> on the subscription box helping you take your Taco Tuesday to the next level. You're going to love this. Perfect timing. Yeah. I love that. All right, let's check in with our girl Lauren Kelly, who's getting ready for Yom Kippur, which begins tomorrow. Hi, Lauren, where are you? Hey guys, I am at the Bagel Shop Bakery in Bel Air, one of my favorite places. We're getting the scoop on how these bagels are getting made ahead of the holiday. We're talking traditions and food all about Yom Kippur when Houston Life returns. Welcome back on this Taco Tuesday. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we don't have any tacos on the show today, but I feel like this is perfect timing because while people are talking about weathering the storm, like what helps you get through? Is it the gumbo? Is it the cake? Is it the gummies Gummy from bears. best friend Lori? Well, how about tacos? Yes, always. It's always a good idea. Okay, so a few months ago in a meeting here at KPRC2, our team, they were a little surprised to know that Brandon and I frequently like to make a run for the border. Listen, this is something, it's one of the first facts I learned about you. I don't know how, but it's one of the first things I knew that you like a good run e for the border. Every Sunday we go to Brad and Brandon's pool. Afterward, we run to the border, we get some tacos, we go home, it's perfect weekend. Anyway, so Taco Bell has this new subscription box. Check this out. So it is a 30 day taco subscription service called the Taco Lovers Pass. You can order a crunchy, soft, spicy potato soft or Doritos Locos Taco per day for 30 days on the Taco Bell app. Cost ranges for five to 10 bucks per month. It is currently being tested in Tucson, Arizona. Arizona, but something tells me uh, the Taco Bell executives, I believe they're based in Southern California, perhaps they watch Houston Life and they might give us a little whirl test pilot program here in Houston. 
Who better to test this this program? Who better? And I'm saying, like, during a hurricane, what better way to ride out the storm than with a box of tacos? And that's the thing. Comfort food, survival fruit, what we need to get through an event. If this is my last meal, I want it to be a crunchy vegetarian taco. I'll take a taco supreme. I wouldn't okay. mind a Doritos Locos either. I'm just saying. Okay. It's all good. All right, let's bring in Joe Sam with our question of the day. Joe, take it away. Oh, yeah. You know you guys, I like the Diablo sauce, too. Nice mm. and spicy with the tacos. Yeah. But, you know, we want to hear from you. What is you binge watching? Are you binge watching on TV or baking cookies? How do you weather the storm? That's the question that we have for you. We have those answers already coming in. Let's take a look at them right now. We're going to see Valerie. She puts in watching horror movies. Ooh, that's my favorite. Under a blanket with coffee. Favorite type of movies to watch. And Diane, she writes in, well, the smart thing I could do would be to declutter my closet, but online shopping defeats the purpose. So more <laughs> stuff in the closet. Of course, we have this one coming in. She has um, making chili. Oh, that's good. And cornbread for the fam and trying to keep my youngest occupied with this cheap little alien VR game with no internet. Of course, that's the way to do it. And of course, Sylvia, she writes in day drinking, LOL. <laughs> it's Wine Wednesday. Is it Wine Wednesday yet? She's awesome. asking that question. That's tomorrow. We're ready for that, too. We want you guys to head over to the Houston Life Facebook page and join the conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. Now, Courtney and Derek, Derek, you said you had gumbo. I made a gumbo, too. Mine was chicken and sausage, though. That's how I weathered the storm. Oh, Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> we had uh, turkey meatballs and pasta, nice red to go with it. Oh. It was good. Next time I'm going to Corinne's house, though, for the chili and cornbread. That sounds good to me. Oh, yeah. I'll meet you guys there. <laughs> it sounds good, Joe. Thanks. thanks. Well, the Jewish high holidays of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur span 10 days and focus on reflection, forgiveness, and hope for the new year. And men, many families mark Yom Kippur by fasting and then breaking the fast with a whole lot of delicious food after the fact. Lauren Kelly has more on the holiday at one of the community's favorite local spots. And Lauren, one of your favorite spots as well. Let me tell you something. There are two bagel shop locations in town. I grew up pretty much right next to the original of 45 years over in Hillcroft. But today, we're at the new bagel shop bakery location in Bel Air. It's off of Bel Air and Chimney Rock. And we're talking all things breaking the fast. So after Yom Kippur services, after fasting for a whole day, people are starving and they want some delicious traditional food. And here to chat with us today is a good friend of mine. This is Rihanna Sherman. She's the COO here. And this is such a great location. I love that this finally got to open because you guys opened during the pandemic, right? We definitely did. We definitely endured all the struggles that come with the pandemic, but our Bagel Shop Bakery, too, is open and we are kicking and, and loving every minute of and it. And you guys are going to have just as great of a menu, if not even more. I want to show off your multicolored rainbow bagels, one of the staples here. And I even see when you guys do it for the Astros, you have tons of different Astros colors. You have all kinds of bakery, delicious goodness. A lot of it is great stuff to come in after the high holidays because it's Especially with Yom Kippur, people are fasting right. for 24 hours. Why don't you tell everybody what Yom Kippur is, if you can explain? Absolutely, to our absolutely. So in Rosh Hashanah, the new year, the new year, it is the head of the year. You are written in the book of life, and on Yom Kippur, you are sealed. So we fast, we you know atone for our sins. It is the day of atonement for Jewish people um, around the world. And so after that, after the day of atonement, after we have gone to services, after we have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, we. <laughs> We break our fast because we, we do are something fasting that we do all day. best as the and Jewish we people. Eat. We eat. <laughs> we love to eat. And coming Absolutely. up a little bit later on the show, Rihanna, don't go anywhere. We're going to show you guys some of the delicious stuff that they have to eat here. After you guys break your fast from Yom Kippur services, you definitely want to come by the New York Bagel Shop right here off of Chimney Rock and Bel Air. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys in the studio for now. I've got a special haul of treat coming up a little bit later on in the show. Okay, something tells me you're going to enjoy that very much, Lauren. So Kelly. good. We'll see you in just oh, a yeah. bit. Yeah. When we come back, World All Alzheimer's Month sheds light on dementia. We are sharing the signs to look for when memory loss may be more than just forgetfulness. And a bit later, the mission behind one local teen's business. What inspired her to give back to young cancer patients? That and so much more when Houston Life returns.
September is World Alzheimer's Month, a time to raise awareness and challenge the stigma surrounding dementia. Millions of Americans are impacted by this disease, and that's why early detection is so critical. Here with more is neurologist with UT Health Neurosciences and Memorial Hermann Mischer Neuroscience Institute, Dr. Paul Schultz. Welcome back to Houston Life. It's great to see you. Thank you very much for having me. Nice to see you. Good to see you. So uh, let's just break down what exactly is dementia, because it seems like memory disorders can be caused by any number of things. Yeah, dementia is a general term that we use to describe someone who has two areas of change, like forgetting and getting lost. But the three important things to remember are that it's a general term, umbrella term, and there are many, many causes of dementia. And some of those causes are reversible, so the word dementia doesn't mean we can't do anything. Okay, and let's get into Alzheimer's as well, because uh, some of the causes of dementia, there are other causes aside from Alzheimer's, which can also cause dementia, is that correct? Yes, uh, when I see someone in clinic, I know statistically about 60% may have Alzheimer's, but the other 40% may have things that we can treat differently than that. For example, they might have vitamin deficiencies, they might have a low thyroid, they might have vascular disease, they might have a tumor, even a benign tumor pressing in the brain can cause symptoms. There can be medication side effects, mood disorders, sleep apnea, and a bunch of other things. So when we see someone, we rule out all of those things, because of course, if we find them, we can treat them. If we rule them all out, then we say that someone probably has Alzheimer's disease. Okay, and we're seeing on our screen right now some of the factors that can cause these memory disorders. I know that these are some of the common things um, mm -hmm. that can cause memory issues. Let's give a scenario though. I mean, for, for some people, they may misplace their car keys or they may go into a room and not remember, wait a minute, like, why did I even come into this room? I, I mean, this happens to me all the time. So when is the time to ask yourself, is this just normal for most humans or could there be a problem? Yeah, that's a really good question that we get asked every day. Um, by the time we're 85, our memory and word finding is about 40% less than when we're 20. And I'm about two thirds of the way to 85, so I can tell you that I feel it already. What I would say is that uh, to know if we're on the normal curve of being human or not, it's very helpful to compare oneself to loved ones and friends who are about the same age. So if all of us are forgetting the same amount, we're probably pretty good. Okay. If I'm worried that my wife or I are forgetting more than other people, come and see us. And those are the key symptoms. I mean, it, it is a forgetfulness that just seems exaggerated mm -hmm. and constant. That's the key for when you should go see a doctor. Yes, it, it, it's often forgetfulness, but it can even be finding one's way around as a problem, word finding that's more than other people, making not so good decisions. Sometimes we even see a personality change. So there's a lot of subtlety to it, but you're absolutely right. Memory would be the most common thing to come see us for. Dr. Schultz, there is a new treatment option for Alzheimer's. This is FDA approved. It's not a cure, but it helps uh, a measurable effect. And we were chatting about it during the commercial break. It's called aducanumab? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, there's really three big items to say. One is that we've, we've had a number of meds for a number of years that give people about a year, so it's worth being on them. We also here at UT and at our colleagues' places in town, we're studying new treatments, uh, many exciting new approaches to therapy. Some are showing preliminary positive results. We don't know for sure until the studies are done. But the third item, as you mentioned, is we now for the first time have an antibody that we infuse in people once a month for about 12 months, and that antibody goes through their body, goes into the brain, and attaches to their amyloid plaques and removes them from the brain. As you say, it's not a cure, but it does slow the progression uh, the first year by 25 to 40% on different measures. It's really giving us some hope finally 
for a very difficult disease. Yeah, that is fantastic news. Dr. Schultz, we got to leave it there, but before we let you go, we do want to put some information on our screen for a free webinar. I know this topic will hit home for a lot of our viewers and their loved ones. This is happening Tuesday, September 28th at 6 p.m. You can RSVP at the website on your screen, memorialherman.org slash dementia dash webinar. Dr. Paul Schultz, neurologist with UT Health and Memorial Herman, thank you so much for your time and thank you for for the good news. Thank you very much. Pleasure being here. And as a reminder, if you would like to learn more, you can visit memorialherman.org slash dementia, or you can call 713-704-7100. Now let's check in with Joe, who has a look at how you can get your post-storm cleanup underway. Hi, Joe, this is good news. Yeah, a lot of people are doing that as we speak. Coming up, repairing the damage from the storm. Tips from a local expert on what you need to know before you tackle the post-storm cleanup and spend more money than you need to. Plus, we'll check back in with our KPRC2 news team for the latest latest on how Nicholas has impacted our city. Stay right there. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Tuesday. Yeah, 331. So glad to have you with us today. Many of us have been trying to stay occupied over the past 24 hours. So earlier we asked you, how do you weather the storm? Let's get to some of your comments now. Rose writes in, binge watching Yellowstone. Oh. That's an excellent choice. Something tells me, Courtney, you approve. Oh, I definitely approve. And look at this. Danielle writes in, spending oh. time with my kids. I mean, cute as buttons. Love that. Adorable. Shannon writes in, planning next year's vacation. That sounds like a good plan to me. Perhaps also to Yellowstone. I Listen, you got to watch it. Watch the film and then go to the actual place. How yes, that? absolutely. Do both. And speaking of weathering the storm, let's check back in with Keith and Frank for our continuing coverage of Nicholas. Hi, Keith. Hey there, yeah, after a storm like Nicholas makes landfall, there is going to be some significant damage left behind. KPRC2's Devin Clark has been tracking the damage along the coast. Devin, how's it looking where you are right now and where exactly are you? Keith, we're in Nassau Bay, and the good news is that in this area, the floodwaters do appear to be receding rapidly. Earlier, the water came over this boardwalk and across the street about 40 feet. You can see that line of debris in this homeowner's yard to indicate how high the water was. The good news is, though, in this area, a lot of homes like the ones you're seeing are either elevated or on higher ground, so the people here are used to this type of activity. Still, there was some damage sustained and we are going to get to that coming up on the news at five and six but i want to just say here in nassau bay the waters are receding and roads that were impassable earlier have traffic flowing on them now but still a very long cleanup process ahead for this area we're going to toss it back to you yeah those receding waters very very good news though Devin. thank you and at the height of the storm more than 400,000 people were without power throughout the day crews have been working to restore that power kprc 2s brandon walker has been tracking the power outages and he has the latest where he is. Brandon. Yeah, good afternoon to you, Keith. In the Aldine area, Northeast Harris County, progress is a beautiful thing because the number is no longer 400,000. We'll talk about that in a moment, but first, where we are right here at the intersection of East Mount Houston and North Post, this store is without power. You go throughout this neighborhood, it's without power, but it's also touch and go because there are other corners here that do have power. Let's get the latest center point outage map on your screen, and you can see that it is still lit up like a Christmas tree. But you mentioned that 400,000 figure. It's now at about, what, 190? 92,000 was the last check we got. So that's some progress. And we were here at this intersection following a crew as they were doing their job to make sure that the lines were clear. Some video on that right now from a bit earlier today, not too far from where we are now. And you can see a big tree came crashing down onto a power line in the middle of a street. Crews had to clear that tree in order to clear up the damage left behind from that tree crashing onto the power line. We took a trip down there a few minutes ago and, uh, uh, neighbors said that they did not have power, but at least the street is passable. However, one street over, there was power. One gentleman, his sister, who lives a block over, came over to check on him and said, hey, come on over. I've got power here until the power is restored. But that's the story right now. Touch and go as Centerpoint crews do work to make progress here in those 400,000, which was the initial number that you mentioned, Keith. Now about 190,000 or so. We'll have more later when we talk to Centerpoint about their numbers and 
what they're dealing with here as they work to clean up after Nicholas. We're live in Northeast Harris County. I'm Brandon Walker, KPRC 2 News. All right, good to see those numbers essentially cut in just about half, Brandon. Thank you. We want to check in now with Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley. And Frank, I actually saw a little bit of blue in the sky there in, yeah. in those clouds where Brandon was. You're absolutely right. We're going to clear. We're going to have a nice day tomorrow. It's still a little soggy out there for a lot of folks. And as uh, Devin just mentioned, a lot of cleanup to go. Look at this. This is in the heights. This isn't a coastal shot. That click two pin came in and that tree went right down there. So please be careful. Tropical Storm Nicholas will continue to move very slowly east northeast at seven, but that does continue to put it away from Houston, all the action into Louisiana. So we're in pretty good shape as far as that's concerned. Here's a look at exact track radar and you can still see some signature of some rain, but I'll tell you what, here's a look at the estimate rainfall over the last hour. Really nothing coming out of that. So there may be some traces with what we have left, but for us, that really is about it. Saying that coastal flood advisory for minor coastal flooding that just continues in spots, but it is starting to go down for a lot of you. So that's good news. Just be careful out there till about 10 o'clock tonight. Here's a wider view and you can see exact track radar has the center of the system right there around northern Bolivar Peninsula. So that's where we're still seeing that pull of moisture coming in to the north of us uh, uh, up to about the Lufkin area and plenty into Louisiana and Mississippi. And that's where it's going to continue to be. The the future cast takes that system slowly puts it into Louisiana and keeps it fairly soggy and even in to the Florida Panhandle. In fact, some of the future cast rainfall for all of this area is an easy five to seven inches of rain as we go through the next several days. So they are uh, going to be under it, I'm afraid, while we start to see some relief. Still breezy out there. Winds and plashes 16, 14 Bay City, 20 on the island and some of the gusts still at 20, 24. So with that breeziness, there could be a lot of limbs that have been dislodged or broken and could still fall. So be careful uh, of that. And don't forget that a lot of palm trees froze and haven't been taken down, and those could still fall over. So be very cognizant of your surroundings as we go through the next several days. Well, that city cam didn't come through. 77 north winds at 14. That's a downtown shot. We'll have to take a look at that. In the meantime, Galveston, that's a live shot. Cloudy skies. Wet beaches don't have a lot of falling rain there. 79 under the clouds with the west wind at 20 miles an hour. So the next couple of days are nice for us. And then we get into rain chances. We'll talk about where those are coming from at 4 o'clock. We'll also talk about this front next Thursday, next week. It's way off, but yeah. let's talk about it anyway. Okay. We'll focus on that and the nice coming up in a couple of days. That's right. Frank, thank you. All right, we want to send it back over to Houston Life. Courtney, Derek. Okay, you left out cool front. You said cool <laughs> earlier, Frank. I'm holding on to that word. I know, right? Cold front. <laughs> well, I've got like 66 on Friday. Hey, we're going to take <laughs> oh, yeah. it. It's colder than what it is today, there so it's a cold front. Yep. Bring it. We appreciate it. We'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay, and speaking of last night's storm, for many people in the Houston area, you know, we woke up, no electricity, still dealing with it now, walked outside to find those branches, trees, everything in the lawns and the roadways. It was still a mess for so many Houstonians, from clearing your yard to preparing to repair those screen doors. Joe Sam has some help from some local experts. Hi, Joe. Yeah, hey, Courtney and Derek. Yeah, following last night's storms, these images are all too familiar with the Houston community. So today I headed to C&D Hardware to help get your home back in tip-top shape. Power outages and down trees in the Heights location overnight is what many community members woke up to as the cleanup process begins. We're open. Come on in. We're here to help. Dwayne Myers manages CND, a hardware and gift store that has been a gift to the area, serving their neighbors since 1951. We haven't closed down, and I don't know when. I think when Ike came through, we were closed for about an hour and a half, more than we normally would. We're open 360 days a year. Uh, we don't skip a beat. And now that we've beat the storm, CND opened their doors bright and early to help get everyone back on their feet with customers piling in to get essential products. Garbage bags by far, number one seller today. The Houston approved ones that the city will pick up, plus just the heavy duty contractor bags, much easier to haul off big stuff with. Uh, after that, we're looking at a lot of fuel for chainsaws. Uh, implements that you would cut with like prunings and some chainsaws too. Other items you may want to consider scooping up is bleach, buckets, dusk masks and flashlights, gloves, household cleaners along with sponges and towels. Dwayne also says to proceed with caution because some debris can be dangerous. Well, we were super, super fortunate that it wasn't worse. I did notice when I was driving through the neighborhoods, a lot of stuff's down. My yard is just trashed. But they're ready and waiting to get your yards cleared and continue doing what they've been doing for generations. 
we know that we're important to the community and the community is important to us. They keep us going too. So we pride ourselves in being here. Again, for more information on those tips on post-storm cleanup, just head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv. It's really cool to see that they're still helping out the community. They got up even extra earlier to make sure those doors were open so that when people started coming in, they were ready to assist. Well, C&D is a staple in the Heights area. Glad mm -hmm. to see everybody's going there and shopping local and shopping small as it well. It matters. And those heavy-duty contractor bags, too, Brandon and I used them recently mm -hmm. for some brush clearance. You can tie them off. It's great. It's great for the trash to haul away, so uh, that's that's a good little pro tip right there. Absolutely. Get all those branches in there and get those yards cleared out. All right. Thanks, Joe. No problem. Well, coming up, lip balm that gives back. How one local teen created a business that helps support the cancer community. And circling back to home repairs as we head to break, it is our Tip Tuesday with Bernie Quintero from One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. At One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating, we highly recommend using surge protectors to protect your investment in your HVAC system. At One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating, we offer surge protectors to protect your outside unit, which is your condenser, and we also offer surge protectors to protect your equipment in your attic, i.e. your furnace. Uh, the main reason for that, as we head into the storm season, hurricane season, there'll be, lo there'll be a lot of strong storms that, that cause lightning strikes, and there could be power outages in your neighborhood. And when these things happen, they could have an adverse effect on the electronic components of your air conditioner. Most homes these days come with whole home surge protection, but we also like to add that extra layer by adding individual surge protectors to your condenser, to your outside unit, and to your equipment in your attic in the event there's an actual short in your home, you'll be protected no matter what, and your investment and your HVAC system will remain safe. Okay, here's a question for you. What were you doing at age nine? What about 16? I can tell you I was not starting my own business, but I'm introducing you to a young woman who as a child had a perfect vision how to help someone going through cancer deal with brutal side effects of chemotherapy. No moving, no moving. This is Julia Sora. She's 16 years old and the founder and CEO of Zeal Cares Lip Balm. Zeal means enthusiasm for a cause, which I just think really displays how I feel about the company as a whole and like the work I do with the cancer community. <laughs> she created the company seven years ago after a family friend was diagnosed with cancer. She would always talk about how dry her skin would get, and so I decided that I wanted to help kids that were going through similar struggles. When these patients go through treatment, if their lips or their skin isn't properly hydrated, then they're at a much greater risk for infection. So lip balms are actually really important. It was important for Julia to make a product with quality ingredients and all natural with no harmful chemicals. So she went to work researching on how to make the product herself. After Googling like the best ingredients to use, like shea butter and argan oil, I came up with my own formula. So it's mine. It's not one that I just found online, but a lot of trial and error. So the first few batches, which I make in my kitchen, I would either melt the ingredients together and then sometimes they wouldn't even harden at the beginning. All of the trial and error led her to a great product. So I'll put all the ingredients in here, like the liquid ingredients and also the solid ingredients, and then I'll melt them on my stove and then I'll pour them into to this flood tray and then what you can see now is after I've scraped all the excess off and then I'll melt the top to make it look glossy and then just professional I guess you could say. And there's more than 15 flavors to choose from. Lemon hibiscus, raspberry rose, pineapple coconut, key lime, mango. For Julia, Zeal Lip Balm isn't just a business to make money. In addition to everyone being sold, I donate another new child with cancer, 100% of the proceeds go to fund pediatric cancer research. It's a way to connect with patients on their cancer journey. She's partnered with 30 different hospitals in 18 states. One of the little boys that I met, he was only three years old, and he came with his mom. This was MD Anderson. And he told me that his favorite food in the world was raspberries. But because he had started treatment, he couldn't eat raspberries anymore because they often have this mold that's hidden inside of them that can be really dangerous. So he chose my raspberry pomegranate lip balm. He was so excited, and I will never forget how happy he looked. Leaving a long-lasting impact on the cancer community, 
one lip balm at a time. If I was 10 and you told me that I'd be making thousands of lip balms by myself and then donating them, I never would have believed you. Isn't it so cool? Julia is doing some amazing things. She's so young. The company is really fantastic. And I, what I love about these is the color combination, right? It's bright. It's cheery. The flavors. We have watermelon, pomegranate, mango, pineapple. You just tried one, right? I just applied the watermelon, and it is delicious. Sorry to pull it out of the shop. But you know what I love about this whole idea? She is lovely. This is a great little reminder to have in your pocket of the fantastic work work that is being done. So every time you are using one of these, you can feel better that you're helping a stranger you don't even know. Absolutely. She does have that one for one program. Look, I know that you want to help support this. So Zeal Cares Lip Balm. There's going to be a pop up coming at one of my favorite local boutiques in town, Abejas. It's happening on Thursday, September 16th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So you can go check out all the different flavors. And when you purchase, don't forget, she has a one for one program. So you're also donating something to a pediatric cancer patient, which is so great. I love it. A great reason to stock up. Absolutely. All right, now let's check back in with Lauren Kelly, who's been getting us prepared for Yom Kippur. Lauren, how's it going? That's right, you guys. We're going to show you some of the food, the traditional food, after we break fast from Yom Kippur when Houston Life returns. Everything from bagels to hollow to whitefish to guac, you name it. It's on our fun list right here. Bagel Shop Bakery in Bel Air. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. begins tomorrow at sunset and lasts until Thursday at sunset as well. And for most Jewish families, they are fasting throughout the day, which means that they're not eating. But after the fast, after they break the fast, guess what? We have big, fantastic traditional meals. And talking more about that today, we are here in Bel Air at the Bagel Shop Bakery with Rihanna Sherman. We've been breaking down just after the Yom Kippur service is the Day of Atonement. It's the holiest day of the Jewish calendar. Correct. Correct. What do people really grab? What are the traditional things at anybody's family's houses? So, of course, because, you know, they've been fasting all day and we don't want tummy aches. Right. It's a lot of dairy. It's a lot of parv. So your tuna salads, your egg salads, your whitefish salads, lots of no. Of course, you can't forget the bagel. Oh, um, yes. The bagel complements every meal well, and the holiday. Really, you have to tell everybody, not everybody speaks our language. <laughs> Nova is no, fish. It's salmon, correct. right? It is salmon. So Nova is less salty than lox. Okay. So we sell both of them. We sell the white fish, and we sell the tuna and the egg, and, and we sell it <laughs> on every day. So one of the things that we always laugh about when you have a bagel, you have to have the right schmear, 100%, right? 100%. So and we got all cheese, the flavors. All of plain, those things. scallion, strawberry. Strawberry, Nova, Other any flavor you things. can imagine. Other good things, though, for Yom Kippur, I know as far as, do people have briskets? Do they eat a lot of meat, or? So maybe the night before, okay. as they are going to be fasting. Okay, but gotcha. But they do a lot of the dairy when they break the fast. Lots of challah, lots of bagels. And challah, I know you guys have heard me talk about challah before. Challah is this bread right here. We usually slice it up. This is an entire wall of challah. It's a very sweet bread. It's very soft on the inside, and it's one of my absolute favorites. You guys have that. You've got the rainbow bagels. They have the ET bagels. They have the poppy seed bagels. They have the cinnamon raisin bagels. We've got Let it all, you, Lauren. I could probably <laughs> work here with the amount of years that I have spent here at the bagel shop. This is the second location in Bel Air. Rihanna, thank you so much thank for Thank you for the having info. us. Happiest of the holidays. Shana to everyone, everyone out there. Everybody. For more information on Yom Kippur, you guys just log on to HoustonLife.tv. Derek and Courtney, is there any type of bagel you want me to bring back to the studio? All yes, of everything. One of each? Yes, all of them. Okay. And we were wondering gotcha. how later they open, Lauren. <laughs> Well, they're open until 4 o'clock today, so you have to get in here early. They open up oh, at 6 a.m., so early bird gets the bagel, right? Absolutely. Lauren, thank you so much. And, yes, we'll take them all. Sure. <laughs> After the break, <laughs> a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show as we kick off Hispanic Heritage Month. And as we head to break, here's a live look from our Transtar traffic cam at Beltway 8 and Beechnut. Looks like things are moving right along there. Drive safe, a little slowly perhaps. Pump the brakes. Houston Life will be right back. Thank you. 
Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, we are kicking off Hispanic Heritage Month with a look at the iconic mural where you can learn about Mexican-American culture in 20th century Houston. Love that. Plus, listen to this musical icon, Carlos Santana. He's chatting all about his new album and the tour and much more. Can't wait to catch up with him as well. All right, we're going to get a final look at what you had to say about our question of the day. We asked, how do you weather the storm? Is it binging? Is it binge watching, binge eating? What is it? Any kind of binging, right? <laughs> Bess Ann writes in, making family recipe with Carabas Italian sausage Whoa. Sicilian pizza called Facci de... De Vecchia. Okay. Yeah. Handmade pizzas. Whatever it is, looks amazing. We'll be right over. Well, I mean, you've got enough there to feed an army. That That's delicious. delish. Jerry writes in, watch the Met Gala red carpet show. Oh, what yeah. a trip. You know what? Yeah, that was happening last night. Hard to believe that all that glamour and glitz was happening a world away while we were hunkered down for the storm. I know. Linda writes in, another food one, eating and decorating for fall. Linda, yes. And yes, girl. Love the pumpkin decor. I could probably borrow one or two of those. But uh, <laughs> however you spent yesterday evening, we hope you enjoyed it. And we are glad to know that uh, most people, you know, pretty much unscathed after last night's storm. Although a lot of people are cleaning up today. Absolutely. Cleaning up and hoping for power to get restored. Let's get you to the news at 4 o'clock now with Keith and Andy. Hey, guys. Hey there. Yeah, I'm actually still stuck on the handmade pizza. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, That's that looks good. real good. That's the way to do it. That's one of the ways to do it for sure.